this week we're going to talk a lot about spiders. And but before we get started, I wanted to show you our plant from our seeds. So this is the seed and it is now hollow. And you can see how the root split it open. Oh, it, I lost it. Sorry, guys. But it's hollow now. And see, here's the roots and the stem and the leaves. And that's after a week of growth. We actually have little plants for our radishes now. So now what I can do is I can put them in dirt and they'll keep growing and produce a radish. Okay, so this week we're going to talk about spiders. And last week, Miss Charlotte talked to you a lot about bugs and insects. So this week I want to talk about spiders. And we're going to start with our book, Spiders from National Geographic Kids. Front cover, don't forget. And this part is the spine, and the back cover is on the back, and it's written by Lauren Marsh, and the title is Spiders. All right, there's the title page, and this, not all books have this, but educational books have what's called a table of contents. And it tells you each chapter and what page they're on. And then the glossary is all the big important words. And it'll tell you what they mean if you go back to the glossary. What has eight legs, fangs, and hair all over? Is it a monster? No, it's a spider. Some of us are afraid of creepy crawly spiders. But most spiders don't hurt people. A thing is a biting mouth part of a spider or a large sharp tooth in other animals. That's what fangs are. And you can kind of see them right here. Spiders, spiders everywhere. Spiders live in deserts, rainforests. They live in mountains and on plains. They live on beaches and in caves. Spiders live almost everywhere. Look, this one's on a beach. That looks like a tarantula to me. Where I used to live, we had tarantulas because we were part of where the migration path. So we'd have a lot of tarantulas go through Cortez. Spiders can be big or small. They can be brown or black. Some spiders are red, orange, green, or even yellow. Look at this pretty one. It's green and kind of yellow. They come in different colors, but all spiders have eight legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they have two main parts of a body. They have a head and they have the abdomen. That's kind of like our body is their abdomen. That's like what our chest and belly part that's kind of what that part is for them spider food all spiders are meat eaters so they're carnivores most spiders eat insects but some eat bigger animals like fish snakes lizards frogs and sometimes spiders even eat other spiders so this spider is eating a frog, but do you see how he still has him wrapped up in his silk web? And then this spider is eating a fly, it's eating an insect. So spiders are kind of important because they eat all the insects that bother us, like mosquitoes and flies. Spiders have fangs that hold venom. Venom kills the prey or sometimes keeps it from moving. Sometimes it paralyzes it and it just, that means that it makes it where it can't move anymore. But spiders don't have teeth to chew their food because all they have are these two things. So they don't have teeth like we do that can chew up food. So what they do instead is they suck out all the liquid out of their prey. And so they spit their venom in there 
and it turns the insides into like a soup and then they suck it all out. Venom is a poison and prey is an animal that is eaten by another animal. So prey would be the frog or the mosquito or the fly or the ticks, all those other bugs that the spider eats, that's the prey. Most spiders have eight eyes, but they can't see very well, so they need more than their eyes to catch their dinner. Small hairs on a spider's leg sense movement, and a spider feels an insect caught in its web, and then it knows it's dinner time. So see all these little tiny hairs? Well, it stays over in the corner of its web, and when the web wiggles, it fills it through these little hairs, and then it knows to go over there, and it can get whatever bug it caught in its web. This is the different kinds of webs. The orb web is circles, and that's what we see most of. Different spiders make different webs. Orb webs have a circle pattern. Funnel webs are built like tubes, so they come down like this and the prey, the bug that it is, falls down and down and down and then the spider is at the very bottom and then it can eat it. But as it rolls down it gets wrapped up in more web. Tangle webs or cobwebs are just a jungle of threads. So they're the ones that you'll see like in your basement and stuff and they don't really have a pretty pattern, they just look like a mess of web. Those are called cobwebs or a tangle web. Trapdoor spider webs cover a spider's home in the ground. So some spiders live in the ground and they put a web over their hole. And so whenever it, the bug gets on the web, it just comes out and eats it. And that web is like its door, like your front door, except it's delivery. So they get to eat it up. Not all spiders make webs but all spiders make silk. They wrap their eggs in silk, they wrap their prey in silk too. Spiders even travel by silk. They use it like a rope. Spiders climb down to different places or they can let the wind blow it. So they'll have a little piece of their silk and the wind blows and it rides it like a kite. And you can see here how it has the silk all wrapped around I think that's a grasshopper. And then the spider can eat it. And that's all the silk. So these are super cool spiders. This is the strangest spider. It's called a bolus spider. And it catches its prey like fishing. It just has a piece of thread. And whenever the other one, a bug comes and gets it, it like reels it up. Kind of like when we're fishing and we do drop a fishing line. This is the biggest spider. He's the Goliath bird eater tarantula. And it is so big, it can eat birds. And it lives in South America. And this is a black widow. And it has the little red hourglass. And it is the most poisonous spider in North America. And the girl spiders eat the boy spiders. Uh, the Brazilian wandering spider, it shows its red jaws when angry. It lives in South and Central America. So its mouth is bright red and it'll open up its mouth and, it, and you can see it. I bet that looks kind of scary. The best jumper or leaper is the jumping spider. We have these in Arkansas. And so it stalks its prey and then it will jump, kind of like a frog does. But it can go really long distances and so it'll jump on that fly and eat it up. The Darwin's bark spider is the best weaver and it makes the largest webs. Its web is as big as two city buses. So think of a school bus and it's two of them. That's how long its web is. That's really big. And the best mommy spider is the wolf spider. And she's a pretty fierce predator, but she's a really good mommy. And I don't know if you guys can see in the picture, but all of her babies right on her back. That's kind of cool, huh? 
this, uh, this is the mommy and all those things, that's the baby spiders. And she takes really good care of all her baby spiders. So the big or small, all spiders start out as an egg and then the mother spider protects them in an egg sac. So you can kind of see like this, if you think of it as like a pillowcase with all these eggs inside of it. She may keep the egg sac safe in her web or sometimes they hide them under a leaf or in a log or sometimes they just keep them on them. And you'll see the spider and it looks like she has something that's just like connected to her and that's her egg sac. And all her baby eggs are inside that little sac. It kind of looks like a rock sometimes or it'll look like a seed caught in a web. The spider's egg hat. The spider eggs hatch. Baby spiders crawl out to meet the world and they are called spiderlings. So see they come they hatch and come out of the egg sac. And then look, there's thousands of little baby spiders. Spiders are helpful to have around. Their silk is super strong. It's light and stretchy and people are finding new ways to use spider silk. So some fabric is made from the silk from spiders. Spiders also eat biting bugs like mosquitoes and ticks. So spiders are really ha helpful. So let's hear it for spiders. Hooray, woohoo! Spiders are really important. These pictures show close-up views of spidery things. So you can see the orb webs, and you can see the hair on the legs. And this is a sack with the eggs. And here's a really good picture of the spider fangs. And you can see the little where they poke you is right there. But they really don't poke people unless they're scared. This is what's called spider milk. Um, but it's really just the silk. But some people will call it spider milk. But it's silk. And that's the webs. And then spiders actually have eight eyes, and but they don't see very good. They'll have two big eyes and then six little eyes around, but they still don't see very good, even though they have a lot of eyes. So there's the egg sac and the fangs and the prey, that's its food, and venom or poison. So because spiders are often called weavers, I thought it would be fun to show you guys how to weave. And so I got a piece of paper, it's just construction paper, and I folded it in half. And then, so we folded it in half and then we cut. Oh look, it's a little June bug, guys. He came to join me. Do you see the June bug? And you can see he has two sets of wings. That's kind of cool. See you. There he goes. <laughs> okay. So I folded my construction paper and then I just cut slits in it. And that might be a mommy job. And then I can open it up. And then I also took one and I just cut little strips of paper. And because I did it two different directions, I'm going to fold this in half and we're going to just do half of it. All right. So I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to go under one and then this one I'm going to go over the top of and then this one I'm going to go underneath and then over and then under then over, then under, over that one, then under this one. And then 
I can take my next piece and I'm gonna do the opposite. So I'm gonna go where this one went under this piece, this one's gonna go over it. And then I'm gonna go under this one and over this one and under and over and under and over and under. And then I pull it down. So while I do this, I'm going to tell you a story that where I grew up, this is a story that grandmas and mommies often tell their kids um, when they're learning to weave. And it is about spider mother and how, or grandma spider, sometimes she's called spider mother, other times she's called grandma spider, and about how she taught the Navajo people how to weave. So at the beginning of time, the spirits and animals and everything lived in the spirit world. And there was a crack in the ground and animal spirit looked down in there and he saw another world. It was on the fourth plane. And so the animal spirit and the some other spirits decided to go to the fourth dimension or the fourth world. Well, there was this girl there and her name was Wandering Girl. And she was a shepherd and so she was taking care of all of the sheep when the spirits came down and told the Dene, which is, means the Navajo people, um, how to survive, how to make hogans, how to um, have food, how to plant. But she was clear up taking care of the animals and she didn't learn any of that. And so when she came down, everyone else was in their hogans and they were having their food, but she didn't know how to survive. So Grandmother Spider came down and told her how to weave blankets. And she showed her kind of like I'm showing you about how you but she did it with thread. And she taught her how to go out with all her sheep and shear the sheep and dye the wool and how to weave it and make the blankets. But it's so important to keep your life in balance. And so you have to work and play and have a balanced life. Not to work too much, don't play too much. You gotta be, because the Dene are very balanced people people. Everything has to, everything has a season and everything has a time. And so she learned how to weave and she made these beautiful blankets, but it's important. Don't ever write them down. You got to keep them in your, in your head because your patterns come from your heart. And so you can make these beautiful designs and this one's pretty simple, but you can actually make pictures with your weaving. <laughs> Look at all these June bugs. Um, but you don't write them out. You just, you weave from your heart. Well, she got pretty proud as, and started weaving and weaving and weaving. And she did so much that she got stuck. She got stuck in her weaving. And so she was calling for help. And so spider grandma came down, spider grandmother, spider mother. She came down and she said, well, I will show you how to get out. And, but you have to maintain balance. She's like, okay. And so she showed her that you have to have your spirit trail. So any time that you weave, 
you have to leave a spirit trail. And sometimes that's as simple as leaving a thread long like these so that your, your creative spirit can come out. Or sometimes, I'm going to do it on this one, you will go, instead of following your pattern, you'll maybe do it like this, where there's two. And then that allows your creative spirit to escape your weaving. And that is the story of Spider Mother or Spider Grandma. And that's just a story that is told where I grew up. And I thought you guys might like to hear it while I was showing you guys how to weave. And but it, so anything that is weaved by the, the Nay people will, will always have some sort of spirit path. And then after you're done with this, you can fold them like this. And fold them all over. Because what you're going to do next is you can either cut them off or tape them like this and then you can have a placemat that you guys can eat on that you made all by yourself and you are a weaver just like a spider is a weaver and like the Diné people are weavers but there you go I'll see you guys next time. Bye.